Welcome to today's update on COVID-19 in Thailand. We've got new information today that puts into doubt the effectiveness of Thailand's surveillance for COVID-19. Today we're going to look at two case studies out of Singapore that was recently published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases Journal. In those case studies, they demonstrate that COVID-19 patients can test positive, false positive for the virus, which may cause health professionals to miss COVID-19 patients and subsequently expose themselves and others to the virus, as well as jeopardize the health of the patients by having a delayed response. So let's look at the two cases. The first case was a 57-year-old male. For three days, he had a high fever and cough. On February 9th, he presented to hospital seeking treatment. They ran blood tests and did a chest x-ray. They found low blood platelets and a normal chest x-ray. So dengue was suspected and they ran a rapid blood test for dengue, which is looking for antigens in the blood. It came back negative. So they sent him back home. After an unreported period of time, his condition did not improve, so he came back to a primary care clinic. His fever had worsened, and they again ran blood diagnostics. His low blood platelet count had gotten worse, and now he had low lymphocytes, which are part of the immune system. So they ran a rapid serological test for dengue again, and this time it returned positive. So they referred him to a hospital that was specialized in dengue. And he had begun to develop difficulty breathing, and a chest x-ray showed that he had pneumonia. At this point, they had become suspicious because it would be unusual to have such radiology images with dengue fever, so they took a nasal swab for SARS-CoV-2, and they ran it in-house through the PCR machine, and it came back positive for the virus that causes COVID-19. At the same time, they also ran his original blood samples, the one that came back positive for dengue through the PCR to check for other viruses. And when they looked at the original blood sample in the PCR, the samples came back negative for dengue, Zika, and other viruses. And they were looking at these samples using the PCR method, which tests for the presence of the virus in the sample. And the first samples looked for antigens, and we'll talk about the meaning of this later. The second case was also described in that paper, and it turned out the second case was also a 57-year-old. In this case, it was a woman. Uh, She had four days of fever, myalgia, or muscle aches, and a mild cough, and two days of diarrhea when she presented at the hospital on February 13th. They also ran blood tests, and they saw low blood platelets, just like case one. They ran a rapid blood test for dengue, and it came back positive this time. She was discharged to have outpatient follow-up for dengue fever. Two days later, she returned to the hospital, and she had persist- uh, her fever was persistent. So they ran blood tests uh, and found that her blood platelets were now worse. They were lower, just like case one, and she had now developed low lymphocytes. In addition, she also had in- abnormal liver function tests. Now, these lab results, uh, which we now know were due to the novel coronavirus, uh, tend to be pretty typical for viruses, which makes differential diagnosis difficult. And what's really interesting is that she, too, had a normal chest x-ray, so they admitted her for dengue fever. Three days later, uh, her fever remained uh, as she was admitted in the hospital uh, over that three-day period, and at that point, they took a nasal swab for SARS-CoV-2 virus and ran it through the RT-PCR and came back positive. Uh, When they did the rapid blood test for dengue, it came back negative. So, and just like case one, they ran the original blood test that came back positive for dengue, and it and they looked at it in the PCR. And when they did that, they found that the original diagnosis was a false positive. Now, this has important ramifications for Thailand. Last Saturday, on February 29th, Thailand announced its first fatality related to COVID-19 in a previously healthy 35-year-old male. However, they offered reassurance that he was co-infected with dengue virus and that his infection with dengue virus was the primary cause of his death. Several experts questioned the report by the Ministry of Public Health that the man had dengue, including the head of Chua Lungorn Center for Emerging Diseases. Uh, In a post, he pointed out that the man's two lungs were affected by pneumonia 
uh, which indicates COVID-19 from the beginning and not dengue fever. As a result, a nurse at the hospital contracted the virus, uh, according to his post. These case studies out of Singapore sound extremely similar to the case in Thailand. As reported in my video at that time, he was originally admitted to a private hospital for dengue after a rapid blood test returned positive for the dengue virus. He condi his condition worsened and he spent around a week in hospital before COVID-19 was diagnosed. In addition, another interesting point was that the hospital said his tests for COVID-19 returned negative shortly before he died. Therefore, it seems likely he was false positive for dengue virus and then later false negative for SARS-CoV-2. So let's look at the takeaways. SARS-CoV-2 appears to be able to cause false positives for vi dengue virus in rapid serological testing, which is the most common way to screen and test for dengue. Um, further complicating the matter is that the clinical manifestations of the novel coronavirus are similar to many viruses, uh, such as fever and decreased lymphocytes. Uh, secondly, having narrow criteria for testing uh, for COVID-19 is preventing many people from being tested. This is absolutely the case in Thailand, as patients must have a fever and cough and also have a travel history to a very limited number of countries. This list of countries is often way behind where infections are currently be widespread. So many, many people have missed diagnoses, meaning many people are never tested. And again, there is uncertainty in detecting the novel coronavirus. As I've pointed out in several of our videos, even if you're tested, the results are not always reliable. Because of the newness of the virus uh, and the diagnostics, we just don't have strong lab methods. Our sensitivity can be as low as 60%, which means we have many false negatives. The safe thing to do would be to widen screening, as we've seen many European countries do. Uh, of course, the side effect of that is that the uh, case counts go up quite quickly as we identify mild and subclinical cases, but it would uh, avoid the situation in Thailand of the misdiagnosis. Bottom line, uh, we have many reasons to believe that there are hundreds of undiagnosed cases of COVID-19 in Thailand, despite the official number of 47 as of March 5th. Narrow criteria for testing prevents many from being tested. Other viruses, such as dengue, may cause false positives, so doctors won't consider COVID-19. And the diagnostics for SARS-CoV-2 are still unreliable, which can result in false negatives for the disease. So remember, wash your hands and don't touch your face. Thanks for watching and see you next time.